Hey guys, happy Sunday. Um, happy. Have we done the Happy New Year thing yet? I can't remember. I might have done that in the last video. Anyway, if I haven't, Happy New Year. I hope this one will be better than the last, because the last one sucked ass. So hopefully this one will be a bit better, right? Um, right, so question through this week is regarding Qatar. And kind of like the optimal speed of practising it. Now, my opinion's changed on this quite a lot over the past probably couple of years. Um, and I've gone through various phases of changing my approach with this and changing my full process on it. Now, kata, I think it kind of depends upon what stage of your development you're at. If you're in, if you're in the early days of your practice, you know, kata is going to be, it, it should be anywhere up to sort of like 90% of your study, you know. Karate is, is an art that's, learnt by yourself is taught by yourself yeah your teacher will be there maybe like you know a few hours a week or something to give you the technical content however the actual learning process is done by you in that it's it's almost self-taught okay and the way it does this is through kata it's not an art such as um, judo jujitsu aikido or an art that relies upon having a partner all the time the great thing about karate is that it's done solo predominantly the bad thing about karate is it's done solo predominantly, okay? So the way it's taught these days, um, prior to last year, obviously, the the horse was coming before the cart, is, is what I used to say in that. The balance has shifted more towards kind of like pair work and the kata was almost getting paid lip service. My opinion, my belief, my experience is that it should be the other way around in that predominantly your focus should be on the kata should be upon developing some really good attributes athletically should be upon developing your conditioning your ability to hit hard your ability to take a hit um and then the rest of that kind of falls into place and then when you talk about pair work it's more about time and distancing um and, and getting getting that feel for angles and that kind of thing do you know what i mean but that's that's more like when it comes to karate that's, that's almost like the icing on the cake and that strong foundation needs to be in place first Okay, so depending on where you're at, if you're in the more early stages, the approach has to be upon deliberate practice. So what I mean by deliberate practice, that's about drilling your kata, not just going through the motions, not just going for reps, not just going for, I'm gonna fill an hour with movement. It's about really deciphering the kata, really getting as technically proficient with every single part of it that you can. Placements of hands, correctness of stance. You know, it's why you know this whole Budo process has, has blown up into this thing. It is about you know perfection of form and, and this. That's the early stage of your training. That's almost like the shoe part of your shoe hari about that. That getting it as technically proficient and technically perfect as you can. That's the early stages of your kata. So when you're practicing, you practice with that in mind. Consequently, it will probably be done at a fairly slow pace, you know, because you're trying to get everything right. You're trying to be deliberate with your movements. As things start to become more correct, more in place, more intuitive, more running on autopilot, well, now we start to increase the pace, you know. There's no point increasing the pace while your movements are still inefficient, they're still technically incorrect. All that happens is you do the wrong thing quicker. Okay, so we need to start doing the right things first. We need to start moving correctly and efficiently. Once that's in place, then we start beating up the speed toward more, um, you know, practical, more dynamic. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to cover ground as much as we can. We're trying to really increase the amount of distance we can cover um, and the amount of shock we can put into the, into the strikes, you know. So that then comes your next stage of development. It's now about, okay, we've built the vehicle, now let's learn to drive it fast, yeah? So uh, just uh, something else just pops into my head a minute. You know, you guys are probably all aware with Hock Sensor and his dojo. Hock Sensor, when you look at his kata, he's very, very, very fast. It looks, it looks chaotic, it looks horrible. But if you slow down Hock Hammer's kata, he's technically proficient. Okay, his structure generally is on point and you know it, it, it's all you know it's structurally sound from a Gojuru perspective. Conversely, if you look at his students, don't don't put it in slow motion. I 
okay? Um, I was watching my kids' class with my, my, my kids the other day and they were looking at it and they were horrified. It's like, oh my God, they've got no stance or anything, right? And that's not to bang on another, another um, dojo, but the reason I make this point is that it's an example of seeing something high level and trying to copy it before you're there. Um, technically, you're not proficient enough to do that, okay? So it's about taking steps until you get there and then you can run and you can rank it while still maintaining technical proficiency. So that's the next stage. Um, this is a dangerous stage, that, because two things happen. One, you start to get, um, not sloppy, but you, you you start to, because everything's so intuitive, everything's so automatic, everything's so automated for you, you tend not to think as much about what you're doing. Everything just flies, everything just goes. From point of view of um, fighting, it's excellent because it's, that's when the applications start to appear, especially in you know real fights, you'll find you just do stuff from kata. It just happens, which is awesome. That's what it's designed to do. The downside of that is because you're there, you're now no longer thinking about becoming technically more proficient, more efficient, um, correctness of form and that sort of thing. So things start to deteriorate a little bit. Okay, so... Once you're comfortable there, once you're comfortable opening up the body and, you know, kind of like, you know, flooring the throttle and, and going full speed, well, then it's about reining it back in a little bit and coming back in and out of that so you can do it at will, right? So the way I currently train, I don't train with as much intensity as I did maybe two, three years ago, where every time I did a counter, it was like a real fight. And you'd rev up, you'd fire up, you'd get the adrenaline dump. There's, there's ways of instilling this in your body so you can make it as close to realistic as you can. You do it in fatigue state, for example, you know, where you do a max effort um, set of push-ups to failure and then go straight into your counter. You do some max effort burpees and then straight into your counter so that you're doing it fatigued. You're doing it out of breath. You're doing it a little bit disorientated and that kind of thing. Um, that, that, again, there's different ways of, of psychologically changing the way you approach your kata okay um but don't live there for too long okay get it get what it's trying to teach you from a mindset perspective and that ability to just go once you've got it it's there for good and then it's just about maintaining which now brings me on to the third stage of kata development so once you've become technically proficient you've got a nice efficiency of movements then you can run it at speed and you know you're still technically proficient even while running that sort of like 90 95 percent 100 percent of your intensity well now you have it now it's yours and now you can do what you want with it okay so if you want to run it slow almost in a tai chi fashion you want to do just nose breathing you want to use it to just stretch the body and move the body move the blood move the air um you can do if you want to ram, if you want to rag it, you can do. There's different ways. So the way I personally do it now, the majority of my training is done a little bit slower. It's because I'm training more. You know, and I'm 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 pretty much at forty now. I've retired from the police and stuff. I don't fight anymore really. We're back in. Sorry, an, al an alarm went off and turned off my video. Um. So like I say, so now I've retired from the police, I'm not fighting all the time and you know my, my life's a bit more peaceful. I don't really need that intensity as such anymore. So I use it more as a means of health, of training my heart, training my lungs, getting the body moving. You know, it's very, the cat is very good for you. You know, if you break it all the time, you're going to start to have a ne negative impact on the nervous system. You're going to start to train too often at heart rates which are too high intensity it starts to build hypertrophy of the heart which ultimately will bring down your vo2 max and it will bring down um, your, your your resting heart rate will increase your blood pressure will increase which ain't great from a health perspective so you've got to try and balance that with high intensity maybe a couple times and then maybe four times a week lower intensity yeah so if you're training six times a week two of those rag it you know maintain that ability to switch that ability to go well, the other four occasions now you can you know just enjoy your training enjoy the movement again investigate the movement a little bit because that's where you find new insights um and then that final day from the seven have a day off you know 
the whole thing of you have to train every day, you have to, you know, six hours a day and all that. I went down a rabbit hole and the, there's not a lot to gain from it, you know, train intelligently, train in a way that's not going to burn you out and that you're going to maintain enjoyment for the art so that it's not a chore and it's not too regimented and you don't just end up sick of the sight of it. Okay, so that's just a few of my thoughts around um, how you can look at the process of training your kata and, and making sure it's, it's nicely balanced, okay? Um, the other good thing about training kata more slowly as you become more proficient at it, you know, maybe you've been training the same kata for 20, 30, 40 years or whatever. From my perspective, when I start teaching kata to somebody, that process of really slowing it down, really breaking down the movement, that's where I then gain new insights into that movement. Whereby maybe I haven't run it at that pace for you know God knows how long. Now all of a sudden by really slowing it down, it's like ah oh, I, I hadn't noticed that in the transition before. So now I can put that idea back into my kata, again run it at a slower pace and then run it at a faster pace. And then you know it, it's about adding layers all the time and adding depth. Okay. Anyway, so just some of my thoughts around um, how to train kata and do you have to go all out every time? In my opinion, no. Okay, have a good week, guys. Um, I'm going to get some new partner stuff out to you next week, so uh, stay tuned and take it easy.